Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It's Monday, November 25th, 2024, and uh, it is Thanksgiving week. I hope you're planning something safe and uh, happy during the week to participate in. Uh, we do have a little bit of weather going on, and I'm just going to give you a quick little roundup of what we could expect. Uh, we do have an atmospheric river that's shaping up. You can see it on the GOES satellite imagery. That's this batch of cloudiness right here. Uh, this is the GOES West imagery looping every 10 minutes. Uh, and this uh, circulation, this upper level low pressure system, that's the combination of those two that bombed out last week that gave Washington, Oregon, and California so much stormy weather and 18 to 20 inches of rain in some locations. They're going to be cleaning up for a while, and they're still getting some scattered to heavy showers uh, located in southern Washington and also the coast of uh, Oregon uh, moving up with the circulation. That's going to continue during the day today. Uh, as uh, as this low just kind of slowly meanders uh, inland over the next several days. I'll show you this on the model forecast because we do have an atmospheric river uh, that is uh, pointed towards California, and it's going to have impacts all the way in across Nevada, uh, across Utah, and into the mountains of Colorado, uh, where we'll take you and show you a few live cameras, uh, temperatures there in the 20s, uh, and some significant snow expected, particularly in the central Colorado Rockies uh, over later during the week, uh, during Thanksgiving uh, and uh, the day before on Wednesday. So uh, let me show you what this looks like in the water vapor channel, because that's what we use in the Goes West satellite to show you uh, more water vapor headed towards California. And look at what's going on. I'll move the satellite image over here. This is the atmospheric river that's shaping up and moving towards California. Some of the showers are already showing up on radar. Uh, the big impacts are going to be south of San Francisco this time, all around Vandenberg uh, Space Force Base there. And uh, they'll continue to increase as this area of moisture moves uh, further inland. You can see the subtropical jet. It's the subtropical jet stream bringing even more moisture. Now, the thing with this particular atmospheric river that's coming in, it has subtropical origins, which means uh, it's warmer up higher. So the snow levels, wow, they're going to be around 9,000 feet or so. It's going to be kind of rain below 9,000 feet with this one uh, coming in. And I do want to show you the uh, model forecasts as well for this area. So let me uh, show you that. I'll take this full screen and show you the satellite picture and uh, what's going on. So uh, as these showers uh, move in towards uh, Western California, uh, the coastline here, uh, down here towards, uh, here's about Vandenberg and, and Goleta is uh, down to the south here. Channel Islands are, are located right here. And so these uh, showers are going to be increasing and it's going to be potentially, may potentially have some floods uh, around as well. So let me show you what this looks like from the uh, atmospheric river uh, perspective. This is a uh, full screen and I want to point this out for you uh, right here. This is the point uh, that this graph pertains to. So this is San Francisco right here, south of San Francisco. Um, basically, this is around, let's say, Morro Bay, the California Coastal National Monument there. Um, uh, Vandenberg is down a little bit further to the south. Uh, so I'd say this is around the Car Carmel Valley and uh, Big Sur State Park uh, right in here. You can see what happens. This is what's happened in the past with the red numbers. This is right now. And this is the model forecast for a atmospheric river, an AR3, which is a moderate atmospheric river to persist until uh, the 27th in the morning. So that's Wednesday morning. It looks like this area will be impacted uh, by a moderate atmospheric river. That could produce localized flooding. Again, it's subtropical origins from this particular system. So the uh, snowfall totals as we move inland. And let me show you what this looks like moving inland. Watch these dots here along the coast as I uh, move this in. You see they shift inward. So inland here. I'm talking about uh, inland around uh, Pas Paso Robles, um, King City, you know, uh, Greenfield, uh, places like that. Um, we'll, we'll see the atmospheric river persisting 
uh, again until the 27th in the morning, and it still remains a yellow atmospheric river. But I'm going to move even further inland. So this is just uh, north of northwest of Las Vegas in here. So um, that's where we're uh, talking about places like Death Valley. Uh, we're still talking about a yellow atmospheric river uh, where this, this could create some uh, bit of flooding uh, because there's not a lot of heavy precipitation that they experience uh, in that part of the nation. But you can see uh, the chances are it could get into the moderate range. I'm going to go inland a little bit further as well now. You can see it turns into a, just a... Um, uh, an AR2, uh, which is really a weak atmospheric river. A lot of moisture is going to be squeezed out. Uh, so not really a whole lot, but there will be precipitation. But look to the north uh, as we go towards Colorado. Uh, this is uh, where some areas could see quite a bit of snowfall. 10 to 20 inches of snow in the mountains of Colorado. Uh, because of this atmospheric river coming in and moving over uh, into the mountains. Now, what I want to show you is the model data and what that looks like. This is the West Wharf model, and I've started it around now, 20Z. It's almost 21Z, so I can uh, take it up by uh, one hour there. And you can see the precipitation in the model uh, breaking out in Southern California. Here's some of those heavier showers in Southern Oregon and Northern California, too. They will be persistent. Uh, over the course of today. It's going to be cloudy, damp, kind of a nasty couple of days there in the Pacific Northwest. But I'll take this forward and you can see this atmospheric river already starting to connect here with the moisture uh, coming inland. And that is going to give uh, perhaps some local heavy uh, showers and flooding rains at times. You can see this is uh, now into tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and as this uh, area of disturbed weather moves inland, uh, the rain starts to dissipate on the 27th. So that's Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, looks like by uh, early morning, uh, the rain should dissipate here in coastal California. Uh, may be cloudy for a little while, but then should break up a little bit. Uh, there's still some moisture uh, offshore. Uh, but this moisture does move in uh, to Colorado, and I'll show you that. Uh, in just a minute with the national, more national model forecast. This low pressure system is going to be spinning out here. We won't have to worry about that for a while. Uh, but again, uh, we do have that moderate atmospheric river. Not going to be really long and persistent for days and days and days like those two big lows were off the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but it is uh, going to dampen uh, the days uh, for the next uh, few days uh, there in California. Now, I want to widen out here and show you the uh, GFS model uh, because this is uh, going to show more of what's going on around the country. And uh, this right now is uh, from this morning, and I'll put this into motion. You can see some showers. These aren't uh, big uh, rain showers throughout the Great Lakes and down into Kentucky and, and Tennessee, just some light showers moving through there. And as we put this into motion on into tomorrow, uh, during the day, you'll see a frontal passage is going to make its way through the mid-Atlantic area. So showers tonight uh, into tomorrow morning. Nothing really big and consequential. High pressure is going to take over in the Midwest. But look at this. This is the atmospheric river coming ashore in California, spreading its moisture across uh, Utah and into the Colorado uh, Rocky Mountains here, uh, where there are winter storm uh, watches, winter weather advisories, and also a winter storm warnings in some places in California. And you'll see uh, by Tuesday afternoon, tomorrow, we have a low pressure system developing uh, in the southern uh, Rockies, which tends to uh, enhance some of the precipitation. Uh, you can see it there just kind of hanging around. And we have persistent, look at that, northwesterly flow. Uh, we're going to have some heavy, heavy uh, snow in places like Breckenridge, uh, Colorado. And that's uh, leading up to the Thanksgiving holiday because this is Wednesday night and during the day Thursday uh, looks like uh, high pressure will take over uh, but the damage will be done 12 to 20 inches of snow uh, perhaps in parts of the mountains in Colorado in the meantime on Thanksgiving this is what it looks like it looks like rain for the mid-Atlantic area for Thanksgiving stretching down into the Mississippi Valley 
uh, and then over to the coastline here. But you see this high pressure system. This is going to be pushing a lot of cold air in. Uh, some of the season's most uh, cold air, uh, the coldest air of the season so far, coming down with wind chill indexes of 20 to 30 degrees below zero, uh, will be coming in on Thanksgiving and on Friday into the upper Midwest there as this low moves uh, to the northeast. Now look what happens here. Uh, this low does uh, move off the coast, creates a little bit more of a low pressure onshore flow here. I think it's going to be snow along the coastline, but we will have uh, snow. You know, sorry, it'll be rain along the coastline, uh, but mostly snow uh, like in the uh, northern parts of uh, New York there. And I want to show you what happens here as this low kind of takes over and this high pressure system pushes in, we get a very strong northwesterly flow across the Great Lakes. That is going to create quite a bit of lake effect snow uh, beginning uh, Thanksgiving or Friday morning into uh, Saturday and Sunday. We're going to have quite a bit of lake effect snow here. Uh, accumulations too early to tell, but it will be significant and it could uh, really impact driving between, say, Cleveland and Buffalo and uh, Syracuse and places north. Uh, could have a tough time dealing with heavy snow there uh, during the day, uh, late Thanksgiving and then uh, Friday into Saturday with these strong northwesterly winds. And this is a lot of cold air coming in. That's going to push all the way down uh, into uh, Florida, likely. You can see, I'll put this into motion. So this is uh, past Thanksgiving. This is on into Monday where high pressure is really pushing in cold air uh, across Florida and the southeast. So uh, might feel refreshing to some of you, might feel downright cold uh, to others. So let me show you what it looks like as far as out west here uh, with this uh, snow that's going to be moving in. This is out in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, uh, where the temperature right now is in the 20s. And this is a live look, at least as far as uh, mountain time, 1.50 uh, this afternoon. And uh, they don't have a whole lot of, uh, I think that sidewalk there, that whole paved area is heated. Uh, so it looks like skiing is good. It's a blue sky day, uh, but more snow is expected to move in uh, during Thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, this is the latest National Weather Service forecast uh, you can see this afternoon is going to be fine, but snow moves in tonight through Tuesday, Tuesday night, and into Wednesday, uh, where it looks like uh, heavy snow is expected during the day tomorrow. So I would say six to 10 inches of snow there in Steamboat Springs, uh, Colorado. Here we are in Breckenridge. Uh, this is looking out over the ski resort there. You can see all the trails uh, right now, 32 degrees at 152 uh, this afternoon. So it's cold and we have a lot more snow headed into Breckenridge. Here's the forecast. There's a winter storm warning in effect that will go in late tonight, early tomorrow morning. And look at that. While it's sunny right now, you can see some of those, uh, some of those clouds moving in uh, to the west. But look at the snow. Can you see the mountains there? It is blowing hard. It is very windy up there. Uh, storm force winds at the top of those mountains. You can see the snow uh, blowing off of them. And so the snow will move in uh, during the day, Tuesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday. Uh, heavy snow is likely uh, with temperatures remaining in the low 30s during the day and in the uh, 20s at night. Uh, so it looks like in Breckenridge, 15 to 20 inches of snow is possible because of that atmospheric river coming in and uh, it will be squeezing out that moisture over the Colorado Rockies. Uh, so that is good news. Let me show you GeoCollaborate right now. And this is uh, full screen. I'll show you what's going on around the country. And we do have winter storm warnings happening along uh, Lake Tahoe and the California mountain range here. Uh, however, the snow levels are going to be about eight to 9,000 feet. So it's going to be a little dicey in Tahoe uh, over the next uh, 24 to 36 hours, 48 hours. Uh, but this, you can see the live radars here. So there's some precip showing up there. But here are the winter storm warnings, the mountains of Utah and also Colorado. Uh, we can get a little bit closer here and show you what it looks like. Uh, winter weather advisories uh, in effect for Denver and the Denver metro area uh, for perhaps two to four inches of snow, maybe a little bit more. Uh, but there's the winter storm warnings uh, headed up into the northern Colorado mountains. 
Uh, and in Oklahoma, what's this? This is a freeze warning. So cold air is going to be coming down uh, this week uh, into the central part of the country. And here is all basically, uh, you know, a lot of rain and some snow up in the northern parts of uh, Minnesota. Uh, this area is going to be moving to the east, but this is the area that we'll be watching on Thanksgiving and uh, through on into Saturday with really large amounts of lake effect snow expected in western New York and also northwestern Pennsylvania and uh, northeastern Ohio. The strong northwesterly winds are going to kick in and this is going to cause a problem uh, with driving. Now uh, up in the uh, northern parts of New York there's winter weather advisories in effect there and also in parts of Maine and uh, let me zoom in here a little bit. Uh, you can see in parts of Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont uh, there's also uh, winter weather advisories. So two to four inches of snow expected. Also could be some freezing rain uh, coming in here along the uh, during the day tomorrow and into Wednesday. That could mess up some of the travel. I'm sure they'll be treating the roads there. Now let's go back to full screen. I just want to show you the satellite loop of the eastern part of the country and you can see what's happening. Uh, a lot of clouds uh, you can see along the central part of the country, but not a lot of rain. Uh, it's really just some scattered showers, kind of giving a kind of a cool, nasty day. Uh, those clouds are starting to spread over Pennsylvania. You can see this big low pressure system that's spinning off the coast of Newfoundland. Uh, that is uh, causing cold air to come in. That's why these clouds are forming right here. They're, lo they're low stratus type clouds, and they form when cold air comes over the warmer waters. And of course, the Gulf Stream goes up and out this way. Uh, but these clouds will be on the increase. We have showers coming into the mid-Atlantic tonight uh, into the day tomorrow. Uh, but those of you that are uh, lucky enough to head to uh, South Texas uh, along the Gulf Coast and into Florida, looks like a beautiful couple of days, several days, well into the weekend. And certainly no tropical weather to worry about. This is just some... Um, atmospheric moisture here that's coming up across Cuba and uh, giving Jamaica some showers and storms, uh, but nothing in the way of tropical weather for us to worry about. So that's it for this update uh, for today. Uh, I'll be back uh, probably on Saturday, uh, taking a few days off after proposal writing and doing some other work uh, here, but uh, really do uh, enjoy bringing this information to you, and I really appreciate the feedback that you've given, uh, starting to think about some ideas of some new and interesting things that we might do through the winter here to keep the All Hazards Consortium sensitive information sharing environment updated on impacts uh, to weather and what might be happening uh, to impact the movement of um, uh, goods and services throughout the country, prescription medical uh, drugs that need to get into Walgreens and CVS and, and uh, Walmart and other pharmacies too. Uh, it's really important that we keep a close eye on the weather and uh, I'm so glad uh, that you're watching. So thanks again. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, please watch out for yourself and watch out for your neighbors. Enjoy the next several days. If you're going out and traveling, Please be safe, pay attention to the local weather conditions, and if it looks like it might be dangerous, just stay where you are until that danger passes. Thanks, and have yourself a happy Thanksgiving.